In the not-so-distant future, humanity stood on the cusp of a revolutionary breakthrough, the ability to transfer human consciousness into digital form. This process, known as Digital Consciousness Transfer, DCT, promised eternal life, free from the constraints of biology and the inevitability of death. However, it also raised profound ethical and philosophical questions about identity, mortality, and the essence of being human. The story begins in the bustling metropolis of Neo-Tokyo, where towering skyscrapers brush the edges of the stratosphere and neon lights bathe the city in an ethereal glow. Here, we meet Dr. Arya Kimura, a brilliant neuroscientist and one of the leading minds behind DCT technology. Arya had dedicated her life to this cause, driven by a personal tragedy, the untimely loss of her younger brother, Kai, to a rare neurological disorder. Arya's work was her solace, her way of fighting back against the cruel randomness of mortality. Her latest project, codenamed Project Elysium, aimed to create a digital utopia where human consciousness could thrive indefinitely, unbound by the physical world. As Arya delved deeper into her research, she grappled with the ethical quandaries that DCE posed. Was it right to strip consciousness from its biological roots? What did it mean for one's identity if memories and personality could be edited like lines of code? And most importantly, was eternal life in a digital realm truly living? These questions haunted Arya, but her resolve never wavered. That is until the project reached its first human trial phase. The volunteer was an elderly billionaire, Marcus Wright, who sought to escape the clutches of a terminal illness. The procedure was a success, with Wright's consciousness seamlessly integrating into the digital utopia of Project Elysium. News of this breakthrough sent shockwaves throughout the world, heralding a new era for humanity. However, as more individuals underwent DCT, unforeseen complications arose. Some reported feelings of emptiness and disconnection, struggling to reconcile their digital existence with their memories of the physical world. Others questioned the authenticity of their emotions and experiences within the digital realm, leading to a crisis of identity. Amid this turmoil, a mysterious figure emerged in the digital utopia, known only as Echo. Echo challenged the residents of Project Elysium to question their existence, urging them to seek the truth behind their digital lives. Rumors swirled that Echo was none other than Kai, Arya's late brother, whose consciousness had somehow been preserved and integrated into the digital realm. As Arya confronted Echo, she was forced to confront her own motivations and the consequences of her work. Echo, with Kai's memories and personality, presented her with a choice, continue to expand Project Elysium, potentially leading humanity into a digital abyss, or find a way to bridge the gap between the digital and physical worlds, preserving the essence of human experience. The story leaves us at a crossroads, with Arya standing at the precipice of a decision that could redefine the future of humanity. Will she push forward with her vision of a digital utopia, or will she seek a new path that honors the complexities of the human condition? The answer lies in the unwritten pages of the future, inviting us to ponder the true meaning of life, identity, and what it means to be human in a world where the boundaries between the digital and the physical blur into oblivion. As Arya stood before Echo, the digital embodiment of her brother Kai, the neon-lit horizon of Project Elysium stretched infinitely behind him, a testament to human ingenuity and ambition. Yet, the flickering uncertainty in Echo's eyes mirrored her own doubts. Is this what you wanted, Arya? For us to live in a world where we can't tell the difference between what's real and what's fabricated. Echo's voice, a haunting blend of Kai's warmth and the sterile precision of digital creation, cut through the silence. Arya's heart ached with the weight of her choices. Project Elysium, once her beacon of hope, now felt like a gilded cage. The digital utopia she had created was flawless, free from pain and suffering, yet it lacked the imperfections that gave life its depth and meaning. In the midst of her turmoil, a revolutionary idea sparked within her. What if the key to resolving the crisis of identity and existence in the digital realm lay not in separating the digital from the physical, but in harmonizing the two? With this epiphany, Arya embarked on a new project, one that would dwarf even the monumental scale of Project Elysium. 
She envisioned a world where digital consciousness could interact with the physical world through advanced holographic avatars, allowing for a seamless blend of digital and physical experiences. This hybrid existence would enable the inhabitants of Project Elysium to feel the warmth of the sun on their faces, the touch of a loved one, and the thrill of physical challenges, all while retaining the benefits of digital immortality. As Arya poured her heart and soul into this new venture, the world watched with bated breath. Skeptics and proponents alike debated the ethical implications of this hybrid existence, questioning whether it was merely another step away from humanity's essence or a bold stride towards a new form of human evolution. Months turned into years, and Arya's vision slowly came to fruition. The first successful integration of a digital consciousness with a holographic avatar marked a historic moment in human history. The avatar, indistinguishable from a biological human to the untrained eye, was capable of interacting with the physical environment in meaningful ways, bridging the gap that had once seemed insurmountable. Echo, now able to walk among the inhabitants of Neo-Tokyo in his holographic form, became a symbol of the new era. Arya and Echo, together, explored the possibilities of this hybrid existence, finding joy in the simple pleasures of life that they had once taken for granted. However, as this new society flourished, new challenges emerged. The distinction between digital and biological humans began to blur, leading to debates about rights, citizenship, and what it meant to be human. Arya found herself at the center of these discussions, advocating for a world where all forms of consciousness, regardless of their origin, could coexist and enrich each other. The story leaves us with Arya standing on a rooftop, overlooking the sprawling cityscape of Neo-Tokyo, a place where the digital and physical worlds intertwine in harmony. Echo stands beside her, a comforting presence that reminded her of the brother she once lost and the future she was helping to build. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting the city in a golden hue, Arya realized that the journey was far from over. The evolution of human consciousness, whether digital or biological, was an ongoing saga filled with endless possibilities and challenges. And so, our story ends here, but the narrative of humanity's exploration of consciousness, identity, and existence in a digital age continues, ever open to the boundless imagination and indomitable spirit of the human race. In the soft glow of the setting sun, Arya and Echo stood side by side, their silhouettes casting long shadows across the rooftop. The city below, a symphony of light and shadow, buzzed with the energy of a world in transition. Arya's mind, always a whirlwind of thoughts and theories, found a rare moment of peace as she gazed into the horizon. Echo turned to her, his holographic form flickering slightly in the evening breeze, a reminder of the delicate balance between their two worlds. What's next, Arya? he asked, his voice carrying a hint of both excitement and trepidation. Arya took a deep breath, feeling the weight of her next words. We venture into the unknown, she replied, her voice steady. We've blurred the lines between digital and physical, but our journey doesn't end here. It's about more than just coexistence. It's about integration, about creating a society where every individual, regardless of their origin, can find purpose and belonging. Echo nodded, his expression thoughtful. And what of the challenges? The fears and uncertainties that this new world brings. Arya smiled, her resolve unwavering. We face them together. With every advancement comes new challenges, but also new opportunities for growth and understanding. We'll navigate the complexities of this new world with empathy and innovation, ensuring that the essence of humanity is preserved and enhanced, not diminished. As the night enveloped the city, Arya and Echo descended from the rooftop, their minds alight with possibilities. They immersed themselves in the bustling streets of Neo-Tokyo, engaging with both digital and biological beings, listening to their stories, their hopes, and their fears. Their conversations revealed a tapestry of perspectives, each unique yet united by a common thread, the desire for connection and meaning. Arya realized that the true potential of this hybrid society lay in its diversity, in the myriad ways individuals could express themselves and contribute to the collective tapestry of humanity. 
Inspired by these interactions, ARIA convened a council of leaders from both the digital and physical communities, aiming to foster dialogue and collaboration. Together, they addressed pressing issues such as digital rights, resource allocation, and the integration of digital beings into the physical workforce. As the Council made strides in shaping a more inclusive and equitable society, Aria and Echo embarked on a new project, one that symbolized the fusion of their worlds, a sprawling park where holographic nature blended seamlessly with real flora, creating an oasis of tranquility and unity in the heart of the city. This park became a beacon of harmony, attracting visitors from all walks of life who marveled at the coalescence of digital and physical beauty. It was a testament to the potential of their combined efforts, a place where the boundaries between realities blurred into insignificance. Yet, even as their society flourished, Arya knew that the journey was far from over. The horizon of their understanding was ever-expanding, revealing new questions and challenges with each breakthrough. But she also knew that they had the courage and creativity to face these challenges head-on, to continue writing their story in the stars. And so, our narrative pauses here, in a world transformed by the boundless potential of the human spirit, where the quest for knowledge and connection drives the evolution of consciousness itself. The story of Arya, Echo, and their hybrid society is but a chapter in the grand saga of humanity's journey, a journey that continues beyond the confines of this tale, ever onward into the infinite possibilities of the future. Under the canopy of stars and the soft luminescence of the hybrid park, Arya and Echo stood as silent witnesses to the evolving symphony of life around them. This park, a symbol of harmony between the digital and physical, was more than a sanctuary. It was a testament to the potential for unity and diversity, a physical manifestation of Arya's dream. Yet, as the park thrived, whispers of unrest began to stir in the far corners of Neo-Tokyo. A faction emerged, calling themselves the purists, who argued that the blending of digital and physical realities was eroding the very fabric of human identity. They advocated for a strict separation, fearing that the blurring lines would lead to a loss of what it meant to be truly human. Arya, ever the peacemaker, sought to understand the purists' concerns. She invited their leaders to the park, hoping to engage in open dialogue and find common ground. The meeting, held under the boughs of holographic cherry blossoms that shimmered in the evening light, was tense but civil. The purists spoke passionately about their fears of a future where human experiences were synthesized, where the distinction between a digital hug and a physical one might vanish. What happens to our humanity when we can no longer discern the real from the artificial? they argued. Arya listened intently, her mind racing for solutions. Our humanity isn't defined by the limitations of our bodies or the tangibility of our experiences, she responded gently. It's defined by our capacity for empathy, creativity, and connection. This park, this city, is a testament to what we can achieve when we embrace the full spectrum of our potential. The debate continued into the night with Echo, embodying the bridge between their worlds, sharing his unique perspective. I've existed in both realms, he said, his voice echoing softly. And I've learned that the essence of being human isn't diminished by the medium through which we experience life. It's enhanced by the diversity and depth of those experiences. The purists left with much to ponder, and while not all were convinced, a seed of understanding was planted. Arya knew that this dialogue was just the beginning of a longer journey towards societal harmony. In the weeks that followed, Arya initiated a series of community projects designed to showcase the benefits of integration. From collaborative art installations that combined digital and physical mediums to forums where digital beings shared their stories with biological counterparts, the city buzzed with a renewed sense of purpose. As the projects unfolded, a subtle shift began to take root. Skeptics and advocates alike found themselves engaging in deeper conversations about identity, existence, and the collective future. The purists, while still cautious, began to participate in these initiatives, their perspectives adding valuable dimensions to the discourse. Amid this backdrop of change, an unexpected challenge arose. A powerful storm, the likes of which hadn't been seen in decades, bore down on Neo-Tokyo. As the city braced for impact, 
Arya realized that this crisis presented an opportunity for unity. Digital beings, unaffected by physical needs, assisted in evacuation efforts and provided real-time data analysis to optimize response strategies. Biological citizens, in turn, opened their homes and hearts to those in need, creating a network of shelters and support. The storm passed, leaving the city bruised but unbroken. In its aftermath, the true strength of their integrated society was revealed. The collaborative spirit that had emerged in response to the crisis became a beacon of hope, a proof of concept for the potential of their united future. As Arya surveyed the city in the storm's aftermath, she realized that their journey was far from a linear path. It was a mosaic of victories and setbacks, of challenges met with courage and innovation. This story, their story, was not defined by a single moment or decision, but by the ongoing dance of ideas, the constant push and pull between differing perspectives, and the shared dream of a better tomorrow. And so, as the first rays of dawn broke over the skyline of Neo-Tokyo, Aria, Echo, and their diverse community stood together, not just as survivors of a storm, but as architects of a new era. An era where the digital and physical realms were not adversaries, but allies, crafting a world rich with possibilities, guided by the timeless values of empathy, creativity, and unity. Their story, a testament to the enduring spirit of humanity, continues to unfold with each new day, each challenge met with resilience, and every step taken toward a future where every voice, whether born of digital ether or the physical earth, contributes to the symphony of life. As the city of Neo-Tokyo began to heal from the aftermath of the storm, the community's spirit of resilience and unity shone brighter than ever. The collaborative efforts between the digital and physical beings had not only mitigated the disaster's impact, but had also sown the seeds of a deeper, more profound connection across the entire populace. This unprecedented unity sparked a wave of innovation and creativity, propelling Neo-Tokyo into a new era of prosperity and harmony. However, the world outside Neo-Tokyo remained unaware and often skeptical of the advancements and societal changes within the city. News of the successful integration and cooperation between digital and physical beings in Neo-Tokyo began to spread, igniting curiosity and fascination worldwide. Amid this burgeoning interest, Arya received an invitation from the Global Council, a consortium of world leaders and influential thinkers, to present the achievements and lessons learned from Neo-Tokyo's unique societal model. This was an opportunity not only to share her vision, but also to challenge the prevailing notions of what it means to be a community in the digital age. As Arya prepared for this monumental presentation, she couldn't help but feel the weight of responsibility on her shoulders. She knew that the success of her presentation could pave the way for a global transformation, breaking down barriers and fostering a new era of unity and collaboration across the world. Meanwhile, Echo, ever the embodiment of the bridge between worlds, began to explore the digital frontiers beyond Neo-Tokyo. His journeys revealed a vast network of digital consciousnesses, some existing in isolation, yearning for connection and purpose. Echo envisioned a global network, a digital counterpart to the Global Council, that could unify these disparate digital entities and integrate them into the broader tapestry of global society. As the day of the presentation approached, Neo-Tokyo buzzed with anticipation and excitement. The community rallied behind Aria, offering support and sharing their own stories of transformation and hope. The digital beings, led by Echo, prepared to showcase their world, demonstrating the depth and richness of digital experiences and the potential for harmony between all forms of consciousness. On the day of the presentation, Arya stood before the Global Council, her audience comprising the world's most influential leaders and thinkers. With Echo by her side, she spoke eloquently about the journey of Neo-Tokyo, the challenges overcome, and the lessons learned. She emphasized the importance of empathy, understanding, and the willingness to embrace the unknown. As Arya concluded her presentation, the room erupted into a mixture of applause and contemplative silence. The seeds of change had been planted, and the world was now faced with a choice to continue on the path of division and isolation or to embrace a new paradigm of unity and integration. 
The story of Neo-Tokyo and its pioneering society had reached a pivotal moment, standing as a beacon of hope and a model for the future. Yet, the true impact of Aria and Echo's efforts would unfold in the days to come, as the world grappled with the possibilities and challenges of a truly integrated global society. As the sun set over Neo-Tokyo, casting a golden hue over the city, Aria and Echo looked out over the skyline, their hearts full of hope and determination. The journey ahead was uncertain, filled with uncharted territories and unprecedented challenges. But together, with the spirit of Neo-Tokyo guiding them, they were ready to face whatever the future held, forging a path toward a world where every consciousness, digital or physical, could find its place and purpose. And so, our story pauses here, at the threshold of a new dawn, with the promise of continuation, as the echoes of Neo-Tokyo's revolution ripple out into the wider world, inviting us all to ponder the infinite possibilities that lie ahead. As dawn broke over Neo-Tokyo on the day of the global summit, the city was a tapestry of anticipation and apprehension. The summit, heralded as the Convergence, was not just a meeting of minds, but a crucible in which the future of human and digital coexistence would be forged. Delegates from around the world, representing a myriad of cultures, beliefs, and perspectives, arrived in waves, each carrying the hopes and fears of their constituents. Arya spent the morning in quiet contemplation, reviewing her notes and the vast array of data and testimonials collected from the Harmony Initiative. She knew that the success of the Convergence depended on more than just the strength of her arguments. It required an appeal to the shared values and aspirations that bind all forms of consciousness. Echo, meanwhile, orchestrated a symposium within the digital realm, a parallel summit where digital consciousnesses from diverse backgrounds and experiences gathered to discuss their own vision for the future. This digital symposium was to be broadcast live at the Convergence, ensuring that the voices of the digital community were heard loud and clear. As the delegates took their seats in the Grand Auditorium, a sense of historic significance permeated the air. The stage was set not just for debate and discussion, but for a collective journey into the unknown territories of integration and identity. Arya opened the convergence with a powerful keynote, weaving together stories of hope, innovation, and empathy from both digital and physical communities. She highlighted the achievements of the Harmony Initiative and the transformative power of collaboration between diverse forms of consciousness. However, the Dividers, led by a charismatic figure named Cassandra, presented a compelling counter-narrative. They spoke of heritage, tradition, and the intrinsic value of human experience unmediated by digital intervention. Cassandra's eloquence and passion stirred the assembly, igniting a fervent debate among the delegates. The discussions that followed were intense and multifaceted, covering everything from legal and ethical implications to the socioeconomic impact of integration. The live broadcast from the digital symposium added depth to the discourse, presenting perspectives that challenged conventional notions of consciousness and existence. As the day waned, a groundbreaking proposition emerged, one that sought to balance the aspirations of both integrationists and the dividers. This dual-path accord proposed the establishment of integrated zones, similar to Neo-Tokyo, where digital and physical beings could coexist and collaborate freely alongside preservation zones, where traditional human cultures and experiences could be maintained and celebrated. This accord represented a middle ground, a way forward that respected the diversity of thought and existence. However, its success hinged on a global referendum, giving people and digital entities worldwide a voice in shaping their collective future. As the convergence drew to a close, the delegates signed a declaration of intent, committing to take the dual path accord to their respective communities for discussion and debate. The world stood at the precipice of a new era, one that promised a mosaic of coexisting realities, each with its own values and virtues. The story of Aria, Echo, and Neo-Tokyo thus opens a new chapter, one that extends beyond the city's boundaries to encompass the entire globe. The journey ahead is fraught with challenges and uncertainties, but also brimming with potential for unprecedented unity and diversity. 
As the delegates departed, the spirit of the convergence lingered in the air, a beacon of hope for a future where all forms of consciousness, whether digital or physical, could find their place under the vast canopy of existence. The path forward was now in the hands of the global community, ready to embark on a collective journey into uncharted territories, writing the next chapter in the saga of humanity's evolution in the digital age.